is just as much a part of what Jesus died to produce as forgiveness of sins. Jesus came to heal your body. God wants you well. Jesus wants you well. God wants you well. This isn't just for somebody else. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 2, I believe it's verse 11, that God's no respecter of persons. What God has done for another person, He'll do for you. I know that there's people watching this program today that you are desperate for a healing, and you're wondering, is this, this is nearly too good to be true that God could just heal me. But I'm telling you, it is God's will for you to be well. And I believe that with all of my heart. But you have a part to play in this. You have to learn how to receive. And I'm telling you, this is where so many people are missing it is because they just are praying and waiting on God and thinking that it's up to God if they get healed. God has already done His part. It says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, "...who is on self bear our sins in His own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed." It puts it in the past tense. Jesus has already done His part. And if you need to be healed, you don't need to wait on God to heal you. God is waiting on you to take your healing. It's very similar to the way we receive salvation. You know, Jesus died for our sins 2,000 years ago. And when you pray, people will often say, Lord, I ask you to forgive my sins. But it's really incorrect to ask as if, will you do it? Because it says that you've, He's already done it. Jesus is not going to come back to the earth and die a second time for our sins. No, He's already done this. Your sins have already been paid for. It says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, that uh, He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Jesus has already died for the sins of the whole world. You don't need Him to come and forgive you. He's already forgiven you. So technically, it's incorrect to say, would you forgive me of my sins? Instead, here's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God hath raised Him from the dead. You shall be saved. There's nothing in there about asking God, but instead you just confess and believe that He has paid for it. Now I submit. I receive it. It's a matter of you receiving salvation, not getting God to save you. He's already done everything that is necessary for your salvation. Likewise, He's done everything that is necessary for the healing of your body. And it's a matter of will you receive the healing, not will God heal you. I tell you, if you understand that, it just changes everything. It changes the whole approach. And this is precisely the reason that so many people are not receiving their healing because they believe God can heal, but they don't believe that they have any choice in the matter. They are just petitioning God, begging Him, and wondering what the problem was. I've been using this example from Matthew chapter 17 where Jesus' disciples tried to cast the demon out of a boy and they could not do it. And they said, why couldn't we do it? And Jesus said, it's because of your unbelief. He didn't say it's because you don't have faith. They had faith, but they had unbelief mixed with their faith, and that unbelief negated, canceled. It counterbalanced their faith. And this is what's happening to us. You know, there are people that do not believe that God heals. Well, I can guarantee you, you'll never get healed. It's not going to happen without you believing. But there are some people who believe and still don't see healing, and they get confused, and they ask this question, why isn't everybody healed? And there's multiple reasons, but probably the biggest reason is, is we got this unbelief coming at us from every angle, and it mixes with our faith, and it confuses our faith, and it hinders it. 
IT STOPS IT FROM HAPPENING. THIS IS WHAT JESUS SAID. HE SAYS THE PROBLEM IS YOUR UNBELIEF BECAUSE IF YOUR FAITH WAS ONLY AS BIG AS A MUSTARD SEED, YOU COULD SAY TO THIS MOUNTAIN, BE THOU CAST INTO THE SEA, AND IT WOULD OBEY YOU, AND NOTHING WILL BE IMPOSSIBLE UNTO YOU. LET ME TAKE A PARALLEL SCRIPTURE OVER HERE IN MARK CHAPTER 11, AND JESUS WAS TEACHING HIS DISCIPLES HOW HE WAS ABLE TO CURSE A FIG TREE, AND IT NEVER BORE FRUIT AGAIN. IT WAS DEAD WITHIN 24 HOURS. AND HERE'S WHAT HE SAID TO HIS DISCIPLES IN MARK 11:22. JESUS ANSWERING SAITH UNTO THEM, HAVE FAITH IN GOD. FOR VERILY I SAY UNTO YOU THAT WHOSOEVER SHALL SAY UNTO THIS MOUNTAIN, BE THOU REMOVED, BE THOU CAST INTO THE SEA, AND SHALL NOT DOUBT IN HIS HEART, BUT SHALL BELIEVE THAT THOSE THINGS WHICH HE SAITH SHALL COME TO PASS, HE SHALL HAVE WHATSOEVER HE SAITH. NOW THIS IS A SEPARATE INSTANCE FROM WHAT I JUST READ IN MATTHEW CHAPTER 17, BUT HE'S USING THE SAME ILLUSTRATION. AND THIS TIME HE SAYS YOU HAVE TO SAY TO THE MOUNTAIN, BE REMOVED, CAST INTO THE SEA, AND DOUBT NOT IN YOUR HEART. WHY WOULD HE EVEN PUT THIS IN THERE ABOUT DON'T DOUBT? NOW SPEAK IN FAITH. IT'S OBVIOUS THAT HE'S TALKING ABOUT SPEAKING IN FAITH AND DON'T DOUBT. WHY WOULD HE EVEN PUT DON'T DOUBT IN THERE IF IF YOU'RE IN FAITH, YOU JUST AUTOMATICALLY DON'T DOUBT. YOU CAN BELIEVE AND YET STILL HAVE RESERVATIONS AND STILL HAVE QUESTIONS, AND THOSE THINGS WILL DILUTE YOUR FAITH. ONE OF THE THINGS THAT MADE ABRAHAM SO POWERFUL... LET ME JUST READ SOME OF THESE VERSES TO YOU IN ROMANS CHAPTER 4, AND IT WAS TALKING ABOUT ABRAHAM'S FAITH, AND IN ROMANS CHAPTER 4, IT SAYS IN VERSE 18, WHO AGAINST HOPE BELIEVED IN HOPE THAT HE MIGHT BECOME THE FATHER OF MANY NATIONS ACCORDING TO THAT WHICH WAS SPOKEN, SO SHALL THY SEED BE. AND IN VERSE 19, IT SAYS, AND BE NOT WEAK IN FAITH, HE CONSIDERED NOT HIS OWN BODY NOW DEAD WHEN HE WAS ABOUT A HUNDRED YEARS OLD, NEITHER YET THE DEADNESS OF SARAH'S WOMB. NOW THINK ABOUT THIS. HE WAS NEARLY A HUNDRED YEARS OLD. HE WAS 99 WHEN THE ANGELS CAME AND TOLD HIM THIS. AND IT SAYS THAT HE CONSIDERED NOT HIS OWN BODY WHEN HE WAS NOW DEAD, NOR YET THE DEADNESS OF SARAH'S WOMB. WHEN I GOT DIAGNOSED WITH THE MS, MY WHOLE LIFE AT THAT POINT CHANGED. I TRIED TO RECEIVE HEALING FOR PROBABLY ABOUT EIGHT YEARS STRAIGHT. LIKE, I FELT LIKE I HAD TO RECEIVE SOMETHING, AND I HAD TO FIGHT AND DO ALL THESE THINGS. WHEN YOU SUFFER, AND THEN YOU SUFFER SOME MORE, THERE'S NOTHING LEFT. THERE'S NO WILL TO LIVE. DEATH ACTUALLY LOOKS GREAT. THAT'S WHERE I WAS AT. FOR YEARS, JEREMIAH FOUGHT MULTIPLE SCLEROSIS, A CHRONIC DISEASE WITH SYMPTOMS THAT INCLUDE PAIN, FATIGUE, DIFFICULTY WALKING, AND DEPRESSION. THOUGH HE HAD SEEN GOD DELIVER HIM FROM DRUGS AND ALCOHOL, AND THOUGH HE HAD SEEN COUNTLESS OTHERS HEALED OF INCURABLE DISEASES, JEREMIAH REACHED THE POINT WHERE HE JUST WANTED TO GIVE UP AND DIE. THIS IS THE STORY OF HOW ONE FORMER ADDICT TURNED CARIS STUDENT RECEIVED HIS HEALING NOT IN FORMULAS OR 12-STEP PROGRAMS, BUT THROUGH LEARNING TO REST IN THE FINISHED WORK OF JESUS. THIS IS THE HEALING JOURNEY OF JEREMIAH CLASS. AS A HEAVY DRUG USER, JEREMIAH ASSUMED THAT THE SYMPTOMS OF MS WERE JUST A BYPRODUCT OF HIS LIFESTYLE. FOR WEEKS HE IGNORED THE WARNING SIGNS UNTIL ONE DAY HIS BODY BEGAN SHUTTING DOWN. I'M WALKING DOWN THE SIDEWALK AND IT FELT uh, HALF MY BODY, EXACTLY HALF MY BODY WENT NUMB. I'm um, SO I THOUGHT BECAUSE OF THE DRUGS I DID AND THE CRAZY LIFESTYLE CAUSED ME TO HAVE A STROKE. SO THAT'S WHAT GOT ME TO THE HOSPITAL. THEY HAD RECOMMENDED ME TO GO TO A SPECIALIST, A NEUROLOGIST. And when he told me the diagnosis, I wasn't sure what that was. So I asked him, I said, well, what, is, what does that mean? And then he started uh, giving some of the details where you lose your function of your body. When, I, when he told me that, I, I left the office and I just went and got some alcohol. And it didn't hit me until I realized that I, I couldn't continue in the lifestyle I was in and I didn't know how to get out of it because I was hooked on all this stuff. Years after I got diagnosed with uh, MS, I ended up in a rehab and I got saved and set free from drugs and alcohol, but I still had this incurable disease, multiple sclerosis. I ended up in a nursing home. I had lost all strength and I was getting super weak, so my muscle tone was really gone. Uh, everything that I used to be able to do, I couldn't really do anymore. 
they had put me on disability because of the MS. So I had all the time in the world. And I was sitting in my, sitting in my bedroom one night and I asked God, I said, I need a teacher. And so I said, God, we have the internet. What, what teacher should I, I listen to? And he led me to Andrew Womack. Today, I'm gonna to begin a brand new series talking about God Wants You Well. And so I started listening to God Wants You Well, all these different teachings that he had on his website and just listening to him day after a day. Healing Journeys was a big part of me in believing that this is possible for me too. The first one that I that really uh, helped me to, to build my faith and believe that God is still healing today was Mike Hesch because he had, he had a picture of everything that he went through from start to finish. And then uh, Mercy Santos, she was healed of MS, the same thing that I was dealing with. I got these healing testimonies to show me that it actually works. Jeremiah soaked in all of Andrew's material, including our healing journeys, which he watched religiously. After listening for eight years, Jeremiah was confused on why he still had MS. Though he understood the believer's authority, God wants you well, and you've already got it. He didn't yet understand that the Word of God is not a formula that could be followed like a 12-step program. My mind had gotten renewed from its old way of thinking of drugs, alcohol, by listening to Andrew's teachings over and over and over again because the mind was being renewed. But I had had this uh, incurable disease that I, I just couldn't seem to, to get to, to go away. No matter how many times I quoted the scriptures, no matter how many times I read the healing scriptures, prayed for other people, just all kinds of stuff I did. And it just seems like nothing was working for me. And I was so, I was beyond frustrated. Like I was actually becoming very unstable. I couldn't open the Bible without all this pressure. Like I felt like I had to receive something. I had to fight and do all these things. And when this healing thing wasn't working after so many years, it just kept making me more bitter and, and hope deferred made, made my heart sick. And the last thing I told God, I said, I'll try everything that I can do to receive healing. And Andrew Womack School was the last thing on the list. As his last ditch effort to receive healing, Jeremiah decided to enroll at Karis Bible College. Well, it was the first year of school I was there and I had I'd gotten so sick, I had lost all the feeling to my body and my emotional thinking wasn't really proper. I just wasn't functioning. But I remember sitting in the back auditorium and I would sit there just like wanting to quit Karis and all of it. When you suffer and then you suffer some more, there's nothing left, there's no will to live. Death actually looks great. That's where I was at. I had missed the first thing, and that was asking God into all this. And I just talked to God out loud. I says, I'm done with this. But once I just quit and let all of my works go, I was able to just rest. All the pressure was relieved off of me, and now it was all God's turn. God has already provided everything that you ever will need, and you just rest in this. You trust Him instead of believing that you got to do something to get God to move and provide your needs. Instead, you rest in the fact that God, by grace, has already provided everything you will ever need. All my focus went on to God. I was so focused on Him and working on my relationship with Him. I wasn't looking for my symptoms anymore. I wasn't doing any of that. I uh, stayed so focused on Jesus and His love for me that I didn't realize my symptoms were fading away. I started doing construction stuff around the house, and through that, I, I forgot about my symptoms. There came a moment I was on a on a roof, putting uh, shingles on, and I realized like I'm I'm really healed. And when I just quit and turned to God and asked Him for help, and that's when my healing came. After receiving his breakthrough and graduating from Karis, Jeremiah is now in full-time ministry where he shares the same truth that set him free. You can either have a Christian religion or you have a walk with God. As Adam and Eve walked and talked with God in the cool of the garden before the Bible was even written. In addition to teaching at live events, Jeremiah has published multiple books that share in greater detail how the love of God delivered him from drug addiction and multiple sclerosis. To learn more about his ministry, visit jeremiahclass.com. As Jeremiah goes out and sees others healed by his revelation on God's rest, 
He realizes that none of this would have been possible without the support of our friends and partners. So I just want to say thank you for all the people that have helped to get this message out, to show me that God does want me well, that God loves me. I used to have a fighting faith, now I have a resting faith. But I had that one block and I was not knowing him personally. Have you lost all hope? Is your world falling apart? Don't quit. The Christian life isn't difficult, it's not hard, it's impossible for you in yourself. And the good news is God didn't leave you by yourself. Our South Africa Prayer Department is here to serve you. Call us Monday to Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. on plus two seven. 21914110 or contact us via WhatsApp or Telegram on plus two seven seven nine triple two one three four seven today. Hi, my name's Carly and I've been healed of epilepsy. Well, I was diagnosed with epilepsy when I was 17 and I started by having um, seizures here and there until they got to the point where they were several times a day. And at that point, I'd hidden it from my family long enough and I needed to go to the doctors. So I went and saw my, my local practitioner and I remember really clearly just sitting down in, in, his, in his office and explaining to him what went on with me, that every now and again I'd just have a I just collapse on the floor and, and wake up hours later and, and not really know what was happening. And he, he sent me for tests and he had this really grave look about him. And I said to him, this is just a phase, right? I'm gonna grow out of it. And he said to me, no, this is not just a phase. You're a very sick young lady. And um, I, went to the, I went to the hospital and they told me everything that I should never ever do again, like ride a bike or climb a tree or drive a car. And it wasn't a blessing, you know, it, it was just, it was something that, that terrified me. They, they, they told me what was wrong with me, but they didn't really teach me how to live with it. They gave me a bunch of medications and sent me on my way. But it didn't get better, it got worse. Until eventually, um, it was so bad, I'd ha I was having so many seizures and the medication couldn't control it. I would wake up um, in the supermarket, on the floor, in the hospital, in ICU, um, just fall down the stairs. I mean, I just, I just, my life was incapacitated. So I just kind of learned to live with it and sucked it up, you know, and kept going on. But eventually, I needed a babysitter just for me. I couldn't be left alone with my children anymore. I was taking about 13 different medications. They were such strong medications. I had to take them at such, such a, a regular time every day that even if I took them 15 minutes to 30 minutes late a day, I'd have a seizure. It had to be that, that well controlled. And even then, um, with the medication, the seizures weren't wholly ever controlled. But you know, it frustrated me because when I looked in the Word and I saw, I read the New Testament, I saw Jesus doing miracles. I saw Jesus healing the sick. I thought maybe he was just in a bad mood. Maybe I, I, wasn't, I wasn't in favour or something. One day I went to a Bible study and it was my friend's Bible study. She was part of a different church. And I noticed there was something different about those group of ladies. Their relationship with Jesus had, was life-giving and I wanted what they had. When, when we sat there, she said, we're just going to spend a couple of minutes just being quiet, just listening to the Holy Spirit. Well, that was new for me because I hadn't really picked up on the Holy Spirit part of things, didn't really know who the Holy Spirit was, but uh, I thought, okay, I don't want to be rude. So everyone in the room shut their eyes and I kind of looked around, you know, and I kind of peeked out to see if anyone else had their eyes open. And on the inside of me, when I got real quiet, I just, I just heard the Lord. I didn't know it was the Lord immediately, but I heard this, this, this voice on the inside of me and I knew it wasn't coming from me. And it said, Carly, you know, this epilepsy, you, you haven't ever let me in on it. You can be healed from this in two weeks' time if you choose to be. He said to me, you know, it's just like a switch. You can, you can flick it off. You just, you just turn epilepsy off when you're ready to. I thought, wow, that's pretty huge. And then a scripture from Deuteronomy came to me, and it was just like, I've set before you life and death. Choose life. It's like the God of the universe has put the power in my hands to choose life over something that's controlled me all these years. Man, that just, that just blew me away. 
I was like, I can't tell anyone. They just took, they're going to think I'm, I'm loopy. So I kept it to myself. That period of two weeks, the Lord just showed me. He showed me in the Word. He showed me in my heart. He showed me in my dreams. How much that epilepsy had become part of me. And that my life had just adapted around being sick. He just started to show me what it would be like to be well. What would it be like to, to get up in the morning and not have to be ruled by doctor's appointments and drugs and, and safe areas and, you know, and managing a disease? What would it be like? And, and so over that period of two weeks, the Lord just changed my heart. He showed me that I was special because I was his child and that he had plans and purposes for my life that I couldn't achieve if I was sick. So I said, you know, if, if I go back to this Bible study, having not told anything what the Lord's been showing me over these last couple of weeks, and my friend um, offers to pray for me, I'm going to know it's you, God. I'm going to know it's you. So I went back to that Bible study, and all through that Bible study, I didn't say anything, and nobody, nobody offered to pray for me. Absolutely nothing happened. So we got to the end, and we're leaving for the afternoon, going to get our children from school. And just as we're walking down the garden path, my friend looks at me. She said, you know, I really feel I'm meant to pray for you. So she, we, didn't, we didn't have a lot of time, so she just slapped her hands on me. She said, I'll be healed in the name of Jesus, and kind of chuckled and walked away. But for me, I knew, I just knew because I knew because I knew. That was it. It was done. I was healed. And on the inside of me, in my mind's eye, I just flicked that switch. I just turned epilepsy off. I chose life in that moment. And I went home and I was so excited and my, my husband was there and he said, well, how was your day, honey? And I'm like, it was awesome. I was healed of epilepsy today. He said, well, you're going to die and leave me with three children, aren't you? I said, well, I wasn't planning on it. But you know, we'd, we'd come from a, a background where this didn't happen. It just seemed so good to be true, too good to be true. And he, it didn't go down very well either when I told him I was going to stop taking all my medication. That kind of freaked him out a bit. You know, because like I said, within 15 or 30 minutes of me being late taking my medication, I'd be having seizures. Well, hours went past and I hadn't taken any medication and I still hadn't had any seizures. And, uh, and, and slowly by slowly, he started to see, well, hang on a minute, something really did happen to you. But I tell you, that was um, 11 years ago and I've never had another seizure. I've never had any of the medication anymore. I quit taking everything in that moment because I was so utterly convinced that the Lord had spoken to me. I just, I just drew that line in the sand. I just picked up that stone and killed that Goliath and he wasn't going to be resurrected. So that was the end of epilepsy forever. You know, one thing that was really instrumental in me receiving my healing was coming to the understanding that, healing wasn't, that, that, that sickness wasn't good. I had to come to understand that sickness wasn't a good thing, that healing was God's will for my life. And to, and to start to imagine what it would be like to, to not live with sickness, but to wake up every day and walk in the divine health and healing that God had for me all along. But before I could receive that, I had to start to see myself well, to see myself healthy, to see myself healed, to see myself like a child of God. And that starts now, right where you are, sitting in your seats, laying in your bed, wherever you're watching this. Start seeing yourself as a child of God, as God created you to be before the sickness, before the disease, hold, healthy and healed. And it will help to prepare your heart to receive your miracle. Are you wanting to enjoy a life-transforming experience and discover the purpose God has for your life, but don't have the time to attend Bible college on a full-time or part-time basis? Caris can now come to your front door. Caris offers correspondence, eCaris, and Caris online distance learning options that you can enjoy from your home. Relax, study at your own pace or in a group setting and see your life transformed. Visit awmsa.net or give us a call on plus 27 to begin your life transforming journey. The way my therapy worked is they did a lot of supplements and food to help the body detox cancer cells. I had all these pills that I was supposed to take in. I was up to 70 pills a day.
As a nurse and nutritionist, Vanya's faith was in the medical community. Like the Gospel's account of the woman with the issue of blood, Vanya would suffer many things from many physicians until she had the faith to reach out to Jesus for her healing. And um, he said, you have cancer. And he goes, I'm so sorry. On the way home, I just said out loud in my car, you made me smart, God. I'm gonna get out of this on my own. Hi, my name is Annalina Kowa. I'm the director for Andrew Womack Ministries South Africa. And with me, I have my husband, Isaac Akowa, who is the African Regional Director. Well, thank you for tuning into the program tonight. And I hope that you have been blessed in you discovering that it is God's will for you to be well. Now, we just want to encourage you through this time to dive more into the Word and really be strengthened that even in the midst of all that might be going through, that you will always remember that God wants you well. Now, Andrew has resources on the topic of God wants you well in the form of a study guide, book, DVDs, and CDs. So please, we will encourage you to make yourselves available for these products. They will be a great blessing to you. Now, for all our free materials as well, you can visit us on awmsa.net for all of Andrew's free materials. The ministry has offices with Keris Bible Colleges in three locations here in Africa, Zimbabwe, Uganda, and South Africa. If you are able to study at any of these locations, we also have distance learning available. For more information, please visit our website, awmsa.net. We would like to take a moment just to say thank you to our partners for your partnership because without you, none of this would have been possible. Not only are you co-laboring with this ministry, but you're also co-laboring with the Lord into getting this message out into Africa, as well as the rest of the world. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We will see you next week, same time.